What's up guys? Hopefully all of you are doing well. Today I'm just going to be sharing some meal prep ideas. And when I say ideas, it's more of things that I'm just kind of coming off the cuff with and they're not recipes per se, where you can take what I'm doing and put your own spin on it. All right. So I had to do some meal prepping for myself and here's what I came up with. So first I'm going to get a marinade together and this marinade, um, kind of mimics the lemon rosemary wings that I did some time ago. I'll put that video below so you guys can check that out. But it's some roasted garlic. I have a roasted plebano pepper, some cilantro, scallions, grapeseed oil, and some lemon juice. You'll see some of that pepper and the roasted garlic show up in another recipe later. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take some of those um, ingredients and put them in a food processor, or you can use a blender. And I'm just going to blend them until they're nice and chopped up. And then I'm gonna add the lemon juice and the oil. Now, because I'm not the only one that's probably gonna eat some of this marinade, I use the pavano pepper because it's a little bit milder than a jalapeno. If it was just me, I would use a jalapeno or a habanero easy, but <laughs> I may have to share some of this marinade. So I'm just gonna make sure all of the ingredients are nice and chopped up. And then I'm gonna add some lemon juice and the oil. And you can add those ingredients to taste. If you like it more tangy, then you would add you know, more lemon juice. If you want to calm the lemon juice or the acidity down, add a little bit more oil. And then you can season it to taste also. Now I was moving kind of fast in the kitchen, but I do know what's in there. And I'm gonna pop up the amounts of the ingredients um, on the screen so that you guys can see. Everything else is just to your taste as we go through the prep in this video. After everything is blended, be sure and taste the marinade just so it's seasoned to your liking. So this is the only chance probably you'll have to do that. So give it a taste, make sure it's seasoned just right, and then you can take it on to a meat of your choice. The meat that I'm using for this particular marinade is some turkey wings. These are wings that I purchased. Um, they were whole. I cut them into the flats and the drums. And then I'm gonna put them in a slow cooker bag and I'm gonna pop it in a slow cooker. I did add some smoked paprika to the marinade at the last minute. And then I'm just gonna pour that right over the wings. Now, you can put these in the oven. You can put them in the oven about 375 degrees and bake them until they fall apart. But I needed to put this in the slow cooker because I was quote unquote on call for my parents. <laughs> my mother called me and told me that my dad wasn't feeling that well. So she says, hey, just in case I have to take him to urgent care, she said, I may call you. So I knew this morning when I made this, let me just put it in a slow cooker so if I had to leave, it would be just fine. So I wrapped it up in the bag and put the whole bag um, in the slow cooker insert, put the lid on and I dropped it in. I set the crock pot for five and a half hours on high. In the meantime, you do need to clean as you go. Because meal prepping, what I found out, especially making videos about meal prep, you can dirty up a lot of dishes and it'll make you hate the process. So clean as you go, keeping in mind that you may need the equipment again. And I knew I was gonna use the processor again to make something else. So we'll get to that in a minute. The main reason I wanted to roast the poblano pepper and the garlic was because I wanted to make a compound butter. This compound butter was served to me when I went out to dinner with some friends. We were out of town and we went to Morton's Steakhouse. So I ordered um, a New York strip steak and they had this compound butter with roasted poblano peppers and garlic. And I'm sure some other seasonings were in there, but it was so good over my steak. I just brought that idea home. Okay, so if you guys have followed me for a while, you know how I feel about fresh produce. I love it. At the market, these two stood out to me the most. They had this small acorn squash, and we've made acorn squash before on my channel, but these were particularly small, and I figured they would be easy to roast. And then the purple item over there is broccoli flour. It's like a cross between broccoli and cauliflower. So I just got that. I hadn't had that in a while, and I don't think I used it on the channel before. So we're just gonna roast them. So I cut them in half. Make sure you have a good grip on the acorn squash before you cut it and make sure you use a really sharp knife. These were more tender to cut. They were not as hard to get into as a regular size acorn squash. That's what I did notice. So when you cut them in half, just scoop out the seeds and then I cut them into slices. And then later I turned around and cut them into cubes because I wanted them to cook um, at the same time or the same rate of time as the broccoli flour because I'm gonna roast them on the same pan. 
So just take your time and be very careful and cut the acorn squash. The broccoli flour is just as easy to handle as a head of broccoli or a head of cauliflower. You just wanna wash it really good. You take off the outer leaves and stems and you wash it really good and then you can cut it from the center core. And I'm just gonna make some flourets, that's it. Um, it tastes just like the other vegetables. Don't let the purple color fool you. Don't walk by this vegetable and say, well, I don't know. Give it a try, give it a taste. You can still handle it, you can steam it. You can saute it. I'm just gonna roast it in this particular case. But give these vegetables a try and, and kind of stretch your taste buds a little bit. So I'm just gonna put it on a roasting pan with some olive oil. I'm just gonna coat both of them with the olive oil and some seasoning, toss it around. And they went into a 425 degree oven for 25 minutes. You see, that was very simple, easy to do. Both of the vegetables are ready. Now the cauliflower or the broccoli flour does look a bit unattractive when it's roasted, but it still tastes good. You can still <laughs> eat it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be making some shrimp. These are size 13, 15s. I wanted to address something because I got asked this question in one of my videos. These shrimp are deveined. The digestive tract of a shrimp is on the back where we usually devein. Someone asked me, do I remove the vein under the shrimp. Now I want you guys to know that shrimp only have one digestive tract, that's on the top. This one under the bottom is a nerve. Now, if you feel better removing that, you just take your knife, a very sharp knife, run it down the center and remove the nerve. And since we're on the subject, you've eaten nerves before or you have come close to nerves before and maybe you didn't know it, but I'm gonna show you when you've come close. You like chicken wings? Yes, when you get down to the bone, close to the bone, and you see those veins, those are nerves too, all right? So you just gotta know what's what, and if you don't know, look it up, it's fine. So you can remove that nerve on the shrimp if you want to, I don't have a problem with that. It's not a big deal if you would like to do that. Oh, now I'm just seasoning up my steak with some barbecue seasoning. This is one New York strip. This looked good to me in the store too, so I bought it. And this can go for two meals. I just cut it in half and I'm gonna season both sides. And then I'm gonna put it on a nice hot grill and just let it grill on both sides for a few minutes. Now, because I know I'm gonna be reheating this because this is a prep meal, I'm going to cook this to a rare or like a medium rare steak. That way when I pop it in the microwave, it'll take it on to the finish line, you know. So that's just what I do. I will undercook my steak. Um, that way when I reheat it, it'll be just where I need it to be. So just keep that in mind. Once the steaks are done, I just put them on a plate to rest and I'm gonna take some of that compound butter and put it on the top so you guys can get the idea of what I was talking about. You know what too, I thought about these meals are uh, keto friendly also. Talk about something that really melts your butter. Do you need a moment? Okay. Earlier you guys saw the ahi tuna that was on the cutting board next to the shrimp. It's just a regular piece of ahi tuna. It's sushi grade also. Um, if you wanted to eat it raw, you can. I'm just gonna sear it on both sides. And um, I also did my shrimp, seasoned them up, threw them on the grill, really simple. You can throw that on a salad. You can eat it with some vegetables. I really just wanna get my protein done. That's my goal, get my protein done. That way I can always do vegetables the day of if I run out or uh, whatever. I try to make it as easy on myself as possible and I'm encouraging you to do the same. I had two zucchini in the refrigerator. I decided to spiralize those. Um, you have all types of tools that can help you do this with the zucchini. The zucchini is really easy to eat if you um, spiralize them. You can use it in place of pasta and they don't require a lot of cooking. So we'll go back to those in a minute. In the meantime, my um, poblano pepper and garlic turkey wings are done. So this was later on in the evening. You can see all those juices that are in the bottom. If you are into carbs, go ahead and make yourself some rice or potatoes. Um, you can also roll the turkey wings in some flour before you start the cooking process. That way that juice will be a little thicker, more of a gravy texture if you wanted to do that. But here I'm just trying to make it as lean as possible too and just put them in a slow cooker. They cook, they fall off the bone completely. Really easy to do. 
with spiralized uh, zucchini, the possibilities are endless. I'm just gonna treat it like a salad. I'm gonna take my favorite dressing and I'm gonna toss it. And then I'm gonna put it in my prep container. So that way when I heat it, it's just gonna steam lightly. If you saute it first, then put it in a prep container, it's being cooked twice. And sometime it's gonna go to mush. Spiralized zucchini can also be a good replacement for pasta. All right, everybody, it's time for subscriber shout outs. That's when you guys take my recipes, make them, and sometimes make them your own, and then you send them back to me so that I can give you a shout out. L. Tyler made the classic chocolate cake. Now we had to have some conversations about the chocolate cake too. She actually had to do it twice. And this is the second time, I believe. It turned out beautifully. Elle also made a buttermilk pound cake. And I believe she took the 7-Up pound cake recipe that I have and she swapped out the 7-Up for the buttermilk. I like that shine too that the cake has. That's really pretty. All right, and then we have Regina T. She made three cakes. She made a pound cake right there on your lower left. At the top, she has the German chocolate cake. Remember, which is not German. It's an American dessert. <laughs> and she has the coconut pineapple cake, all done to perfection. And then finally, I have Brad Watts, who contacted me via Twitter and let me know he finished that hashtag butter cake. <laughs> great job, Brad. Hopefully you guys got some great ideas for meal prep. These are particularly um, easy ideas that are quick. They're simple. They don't take a lot of time. You just need to take out the time to get the work done. I appreciate you guys joining me. Thank you so much. You know, I appreciate it when you come cook with me and hang out. Don't forget this recipe or these ideas can be found right here on cooking with Carolyn or at my website at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you guys next time.